This is the middle of what was called the War Zone. This is Philadelphia, Mississippi. In the summer of 1964, 650 students, many of them white, were recruited to come to Mississippi to register voters. It was considered dangerous work. All the civil rights organizations combined their forces to work here. The NAACP, CORE, SNCC, and the SCLC joined forces to form COFO, the Council of Federated Organizations. This building is where they planned their strategy, and it is near where three young civil rights workers were killed that summer, murders that served to focus nationwide attention on the inequities that existed in this section of the country. A monument was erected for those three slain young men in front of the Nebo Baptist Church where they attended rallies and prayer meetings. Andrew Goodman, James Cheney, and Michael Schwerner disappeared on the night of June 21, 1964. Their bodies were found six weeks later buried under an earthen dam just outside of Philadelphia. 90-year-old Lily Jones remembers. I was scared something like that happened, but I didn't ever hear nothing about it. You know, nothing said about it, but that was just my belief. You mean when they disappeared? Oh, yes. You uh -huh. thought that they had been... Something had happened. That something had happened like what that. What about when they found the bodies? How did that make the people around here feel? Oh, you know, everybody was uneasy, scared to death You're scared. about it. To ask you, how is it now here? How, how is it now here? How, have things changed? Oh, some, oh, some changes. Uh -huh. A good many changes in that since then. Mm -hmm. Better? Oh, yeah. In what way? It had to be. Is it enough change? Is huh. it enough change? Oh, no. Uh, we've come a long way, but we still got a long way to go. All right. All right. But some things do change. Here in Philadelphia, Mississippi, where three civil rights workers were killed in 1964, one of the major efforts was to integrate the county public library. Well, today, there is a new Neshoba County Library, and it is integrated. This was a significant stop for the Ride to Freedom group. Sitting in the new library, a group of blacks and whites together, being greeted, being welcomed by a white state legislator who made it a point to come over to talk to us. Then we were spoken to by a scholar who is here in Mississippi working under a federal grant to study the effect of the murders years ago on the town today. Um, I think it forced a radical reassessment of who they were, how they felt about things. I think that by and large most of the people in Neshoba County would like to be known for something other than the murder of the civil rights workers. I think it has made them very, very, very defensive, very, 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 I was going to say ambivalent, but I would say hostile towards the press. They felt they were, they were known for one thing only, and they feel that uh, they're more than that. Has it made them any more tolerant? I think so. It is appropriate that these three individuals, two whites and one black, are linked together in death on the same tombstone, for that is really what they've strived to do for the movement, to bring together the black and the white community. In Philadelphia, on special assignment, I'm Lou Davis.